Welcome to Rich Planet TV. I'm Richard D. Hall. Now on this show we have challenged the mainstream's version of history and today we're, we are going to talk about the history of physics and discuss claims that the holy grail of physics, the unified field theory, was discovered in the 18th century. Here to put forward his case is Roger Anderton. Welcome Roger. Thank you Richard, thanks for having me. Okay, now um, just tell us a bit about yourself Roger and what first um, made you interested in, in physics? Well, I think I've always been interested in physics. May, may go back to the time when Doctor Who scared me and I hid behind the settee. My, my career is, I, I basically um, had a try at doing A levels and physics and maths and sort of like found it too difficult and didn't carry on there. Then I went to, and I became a British telecom engineer. Right. And I got all the technical qualifications, like in uh, telecommunications and computers and right. things like that. And you were doing things like physics and so forth. And so later on during my career, I went on to Open University and did physics and maths in Open University. And I was then looking for carrying on for, say, other things like postgraduate. Right. But I then found what I'd been taught wasn't correct. Right, all right. <laughs> so, and you, and you call that, uh, well, the, the, the history that is taught in schools, Whig history? That's right, yeah. Just explain what Whig history means. W Whig was an old uh, political party, and when they present history, this, they present it distorted as per their political bias. And so now it's a general term for a history which has got a biased point of view on it. And so it's obviously really a false history. So if you want, um, and so when you go to university or get things like that, they teach you a false history mm -hmm. of science, and they justify that by saying that makes it easier then to understand what they're trying to teach you from the theory and the experiments. You find out the true history is completely different to what they're teaching you when you're doing your science courses. And I'll have an example. Mm -hmm. from this person here about <coughs> occultism and the atom the curious story of isotopes yeah uh, <coughs> th this historian has found that when you've gone back into the history of this subject what they were doing they were working from an occult philosophy in the early 20th century when they were doing isotopes but because that was not respectable to believe and that sort of thing they, they created a bogus history of what they were actually doing. And the, you would contend that a lot of history taught in schools is weak history? It weak, it's just made, it's dis distorted of what really happened. Right. Now, um, Newton and Einstein are two of the big phys figures yeah. in, in physics. Newton lived in the, uh, well, from 1643 to 1727, Einstein 1879 to 1955. Yeah. Now, you think that these two guys were probably less important than people have made them out to be and that there are there are people who've been almost forgotten about such as yeah. Tesla for example yeah that's right Tesla was very impressive before uh, Einstein suddenly became famous it, a lot of emphasis was on Tesla what Tesla was doing mm -hmm. and sort of like Einstein sort of when he became famous sort of like overshadowed all the amazing things that Tesla was doing right in his discoveries you've got discoveries in Tesla which sort of like um, pretty astounding if you really believe them but they, they try to divert onto Einstein. And in, in one of your lectures you show a film, a, a modern day film where Tesla is portrayed. D what's the name of that film Roger? Uh, Prestige. Right and, 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 and just tell us. What there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a good film but it's only fantasy. It it's, has David Barry uh, portraying Tesla and there's several, well, David Barry is quite amazing actor and, he, and he's done a film, What's the Man Who Fell to Earth and I kind of think the way he portrayed Tesla is sort of like, like an alien as well because there's an amazing scene where he's walking through lightning and it's, that is kind of like an alien coming towards you. Right. And Tesla was doing all these amazing things with electricity and he was, uh, he is pretty much the person who invented the AC power system mm -hmm. and he, he should be more recognized than what he really is. Right, R they're trying to portray him as some sort of fantasy. Well in the film it's, like, it's a science fantasy. fiction it's, figure. Yeah, yeah. but the, if you go into conspiracy side of things there are things like the Philadelphia experiment 
and, and they say, oh, Tesla technology was used for that sort of thing. So you, you get sucked into all these sort of like diversions, right? Which is probably might be true, might may or may not be true, but the theory that Tesla was working from is sort of like disappeared. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think if you look at the things that Tesla invented, stroke, discovered, yeah, and their application in the real world. I would say they far um, outshine anything that Einstein came up with. I would have thought so. They're, they're, for example, you mentioned the, poly, the polyphase uh, motor generator and electricity grid yeah. system and many, many other uh, devices as well. Yeah. Einstein, well, would, would you need relativity if you were going to um, get into space, do you think? Or well, according to, if you believe in Einstein's relativity, it is very important to you for astronomy and so forth and he did make these uh, did do these papers on the photoelectric effect which is supposed to be used helped in laser technology and so forth so his his theories are supposed to be very important for uh, science mm -hmm. as used but uh, it is kind of bogus in a way because I, I don't reckon they're really properly using a lot of Einstein stuff right and you think that Einstein got certain things wrong as well yeah uh, physics, it's been heavily influenced by uh, what Einstein has thought. Mm -hmm. And uh, this h he's changed hundreds of things from what it was originally. And so it takes a very long amount of effort to actually study all that. Right. But in conjunction with that, 100 years or so worth of Einstein, there's been 100 years worth of criticism on pretty much everything that Einstein did. Right. And so it takes a lot of study just to look at the alternative point of view to Einstein. And I've got here what is, what is called the... 95 years of criticism of the special theory of relativity, 1908 to 2003. Yeah, right. and so they're documenting all the people criticising Einstein. And you, you've got the catalogue of the topics, if mm -hmm. you can see it. It's all these topics of where they think the areas are. Right. And people have looked at each of these things, Einstein's influenced each of these things in his way, and people have looked at what Einstein's done, influenced and said, oh, it's an error, error, error. And so when, you, when they count the number of errors people were claiming, it goes into hundreds of pages, well, well, hundreds of uh, claims of error. Mm. So that's how, how big Einstein is. People have claimed lots of errors in Einstein's work. Right. Let's come on to the unified field theory of physics. I'll yeah. just give you my sort of uh, broad understanding of what that is. Yeah. Um, we, we've got forces in nature, one of which is gravitation. Mm. Uh, another force is generated uh, through magnetics or electromagnetic phenomenon. And then you've got forces inside atoms which is usually termed the strong and weak nuclear forces. So you've got f forces appearing in nature which shape the world, yeah. and it is believed that there's one underlying phenomenon which connects all of them together, and that is the unified field theory of yeah. physics. So, which, if you speak to a modern day physicist, we, we will, they will say well, th that hasn't been discovered yet. Would you, would you go along with well, that? Well, that's roughly it. They've, they've got several candidates which they claim will unify the forces and the main one I think at the moment is they, they call it super string theory but there's other ones like quantum gravity quantum loop theory mm -hmm. and so they've got these proposals for unifying the forces and they've got the three main force three forces like the strong the weak and the electromagnetic forces they've got them unified in the uh, grand, grand unified theory I think mm -hmm. you call it the problem they find is trying to unify gravity to that right. because you're trying to unify um, Einstein's relativity with quantum physics. Right. So when you say they've got them unified, there's one equation with all of the all of the different terms in there that well, represent each force. Would you say? Well, it'd be complicated equations. Right. Yeah. Right. The, okay. the matrices and things. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, keep adding extra bits. <laughs> right. One character that we haven't mentioned yet, Roger, is Boscovich, yeah. who lived between 1711 and 1787, yeah. and y you actually think that Einstein plagiarized some of his discoveries. Or is that too strong a word? 
Uh, probably too strong a word. I, I'm finding it. Got his ideas from Boscovich. I, I'm finding it very difficult to uh, tie in Boscovich to Einstein. How much did Einstein know about Boscovich? I've got people who were working on the unified field theory with Einstein because Einstein had a big fight with the establishment over quantum physics. He argued with them that quantum physics was wrong. Mm -hmm. And while well, they went off to carry on with quantum physics, he then went off to look for the unified field theory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those pe people who were working on the unified field theory were sort of like ignored by the people who were working on the quantum physics. Mm -hmm. and so I've got um, the history of these people who are working on the unified field theory. And the people who are working on that, they, they, some of them were aware of Boscovich. So, so it is tied into Einstein's quest for the unified field theory. It's just, it's, it's sort of like, it's to the physics, mainstream physics, it's forgotten history. Right. It's known, it is known in the history of physics department. Boscovich. As, as, as an obscure subject. Some people in the history of physics do know about it. But they're, they're a small member of them and this information doesn't really get sent over to the working physicist people. Okay. They, they, there's no communication, communication breakdown in departments. Right. The history department thinks if it was important, the physicists would ask me about it, mm -hmm. and, and the physicists think I'm not interested in history. Right. All right, Roger, we'll okay. hold, uh, hold it there. Um, we're going to have a short break, okay. and after the break, we're going to um, explain what it was that Boscovich discovered. Welcome back. I'm talking to Roger Anderson about the history of physics and in particular Boscovich. That's, we've got a picture of Boscovich on the screen there. Just just tell us a little bit about him, uh, Roger. Um, yeah, in the 18th century, um, the Catholic Church was rec trying to recover from having persecuted Galileo. Um, but they, they had the priests, the Catholic priests, some of them were still looking into the science issues of what uh, uh, Galileo was talking about and so Boscovich is one of the top men they had looking into this issue mm -hmm. and I think this this is supposed to be him but he was looking at Newton's physics mm -hmm. and so he he was what he considered to be the first Newtonian on the continent of Europe and he advocated Newtonian physics and Partly, a large part due to his influence, he managed to get the uh, Catholic Church in in the European countries to accept Newtonian physics. Right. After having banned that sort of physics with Galileo, his life overlapped a few years with Newton. I yeah? think so. Yeah. So, but he believes certainly after Newton. Yeah. The conflict at the time that w when Newton died, which was left, was they had a conflict between Newton and Leibniz over physics. So you had people, uh, and you also had uh, Newton not having a p complete theory, it didn't unify everything. And so Boscovich was into m combining the ideas of Newton and the ideas of Leibniz and making a unified theory, right. uh, hence why this is a unified theory. Mm -hmm. And what he was talking about was a sphere of influence around objects which we can interpret as a field. So he, he was talking about a field influence in other objects. Mm -hmm. So it's a unified field he was talking about. Right. It's the first unified field theory I know about. All right, do you want to expand on that a little bit then, Roger? What, what my emphasis has been upon is translating his work, because most of his work has not been... Yeah, this, uh, this is a booklet that uh, yeah. Roger d r has translated. This is a, a chemist in Serbia who has worked on Boscovich's theory, mm -hmm. and he's he's uh, he, he's very impressive. He's got a lot of qualifications. Uh, and you've he's translated. Written, he's sitting, written sixty papers or so on Boscovich. And what's his the name? Science journal. He's Dragoslav Stokovic. So this is modern work on Boscovich's theory. Right, and this guy's alive today. That he's yeah, uh, right. And right. He, so like he, I, I think he's advocating that it's a unified theory of physics as well because it's. He ties it into quantum physics. He's, right. he's done the work. And you've translated his, his, uh, his book document book. into English. He, he's saying that there is a field of influence around yeah. objects or matter, mm -hmm. and um, that's characterised by this, this graph of his. 
is it? Or, yeah, or, or, the, the graph, you, which is a force distance graph. That, yeah. is, that, that, that is the force, that's how you're displaying the force between particles. There, there is a, an attractive force and there's a repulsive force between particles. Mm -hmm. And it's well, what we now say is a field. So it's a field for repulsive force and a field for a, an attractive force. And with Newton, he was only considering gravity as being attractive. Right. So with Boscovich, you've got more than just an attractive force, yes. you've got a repulsive side to it. So if we look at that graph there on the screen, we, yeah. we see that the vertical axis is force and the horizontal axis is distance, yes? Um, yeah. So uh, what that's saying is, as we move further away, out, say, from the centre of a particle, uh, the force will, 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 pull, will pull you back then it'll push you away. As that's you go further yeah. away, it'll pull you back again. As you go further away, it'll push you out yeah. again. So it's varying. So that would lead one to believe that there are certain areas that you'll be forced into, i.e., well, of the yeah. around an atom. Yeah, that's right. So, so, so is, it, is this defining the, um, the orbits of an atom, then, this graph? Yeah, Niels, Niels Bohr was working from Boscovich's theory when he constructed the f hydrogen atom he was considering electrons going around nucleus and there was allowed and forbidden orbits if you there was mm -hmm. places where the forces was balanced and there's places where the forces weren't balanced and where the be where they were balanced there was an allowed orbit of the electron around the atom or the nu yeah, and nucleus and when when it was not in that uh, region of area space it would be unbalanced force and so it would either be pushed further in would push further out mm. it's sort of forbidden areas around uh, mm. uh, so that's the quantum levels mm -hmm. of the atom mm -hmm. and you can have so many on each level if i remember from my yeah. chemistry a two and then eight and then it, then it gets a bit weird yeah that, that, so. that is a bit more on top of it from Pauli's exclusion principle and things i think mm -hmm. but the basic idea of allowed and forbidden orbits around the nucleus is coming from Boscovich of his force theory. So Bohr then, who, who came up with this mm. different levels in, uh, of electrons in the atom, mm -hmm. do you think he got his theory from Boscovich? Yeah, he did. He, 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 did. he was working for Boscovich's theory. Right. And so so why, why is it called the Bohr, th the Bohr atom rather than the Boscovich atom then? Because well, this, is this all part of the Whig history? Thing? <laughs> oh, oh, that's, you caught me. I, I don't know why they do that. It probably, if you're being more accurate, you probably call it the Bohr Boscovich atom, but they've, right. they've, uh, they've just, just called it the Bohr atom. Right. And, and all right. And well, here's a question then, Roger. So uh, uh, if we come outside of the, the, the area of an atom yeah. and we get to, say, electromagnetic or gravitational forces, do you, does Boscovich include gravity? For example? Yes, gravity goes, comes into it. So, so, so can you show us that on, I mean, is that part of that same graph or does that, is that a different thing? I, I'm not, not really got it shown on the diagram, but when, when the, I've got, I'm contact with loads of people and one of the people is working out what is the characteristics of the graph. Mm -hmm. So I've got this person who's uh, Augustus Prince, who, who's retired from, uh, Brookhaven National Laboratory, and he's looking into complicated issues like that. Right. Okay. Uh, so, so that that should be hopefully published soon. It's supposed to have been coming out from a conference I attended. So you would you would like to see Boscovich named as one of the pillars of physics in in physics education? Would you? He was. He was. Yeah. I mean, um, the Catholic Church says that uh, uh, Boscovich is the father of atomic theory. Right. And he was the theory which the atomic physicists were using during the Manhattan Project. Right. Right. R rather than Einstein. Uh, yes, I think so. Because you were telling mm, me I earlier on that um, the, the people who were uh, developing the atomic bomb didn't really get on with Einstein. I mean, uh, wasn't Einstein a bit of a pacifist? Not that there's anything wrong with that. but uh. In during World War One, Einstein was a pacifist. It's just, he wasn't um, that's, that's why they f the other Germans fell out with him. It, it wasn't patriotic. <laughs> <laughs> and, and s but during World War II, he sort of like gave up pacifism and decided you had to fight Hitler. Right. So he, he changed his mind on that. Right. Okay. And, but uh, he didn't. He wasn't involved in the Manhattan Project, which is the atom bomb yeah. project. Right. Other than writing a letter to the president saying 
look into building the atom bomb because he was afraid that Hitler was going to try to build one. Most of Boscovich's work hasn't been translated into English, so I'm trying to translate it. Mm -hmm. And you, you get, this is the Latin, mm -hmm. so that bit there is, is using the word quantum. And quantum is a Latin word, so uh, he's, he, is taught, he is saying there quantum physics. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at what the word quantum means in Latin, it comes out roughly meaning as much as. So it, could be, it's, it is a bit difficult to understand what is meant there. In a, from a modern perspective, we would think of quantum physics, but as much as physics allows, he's saying. As okay. much as physics allows, he's talking about Newton demonstrating uh, something, a proposition, and he says as much as physics allows. So quantum physics is coming from the writing of Boscovich in the 18th century. All right, Roger, well, we're going to go for another break. and. Um, when we come back, we're going to have a look at a very brief clip from a lecture from biologist Rupert Sheldrake.